Hello, I'm Anthony David Hobbs, and Merry Christmas, or if you don't believe in Christmas, or the Happy Winter Solstice, you know, whatever it may be. Okay, it's the Christmas period, so it just suddenly occurred to me that I've never reviewed a Christmas film. Yeah, okay, well, here it is, the first one. And as you can see, I'm wearing a Santa robe, or a <laughs> Santa's robe on a budget, yeah. Anyway, um, Santa Claus the movie is my most favourite Christmas movie of all time. Not to be confused of Santa Claus, which is a film in 1959, The Santa Claus, made in 1994, and other films of similar titles, Arthur Christmas, Fred Claus. But anyway, this one is called Santa Claus the Movie, although this is where it gets a bit confusing. When the film itself starts, and the opening titles, it just says Santa Claus, whereas on the poster it's clearly called Santa Claus the Movie. You know, well, I think it's more commonly called Santa Claus the Movie, yeah. Anyway, why do I like it so much? Well, I suppose because I saw it when I was eight years old. It, you know, it reminds me of being a child and everything. But no more than that, it perfectly captures the Christmas spirit, you know, and what it's all about, you know, spreading joy and happiness everywhere you go. And um, the actor that plays Santa Claus in this one, David Huddleston, in my opinion, the best actor ever to play Santa Claus. There have been others that have been good or almost as good or half as good. But for me, no, no, he's, I can't help comparing other actors to him. Nobody could play Santa Claus better than him. Amazingly, he wasn't the first choice to play the role, but when the director and the producer saw it, nobody could play the part better than him, yeah. Now, of course, there are many different versions of Santa Claus. Some, he wore a blue robe, and then he wore a green robe, and then a purple robe, and eventually, 200 years ago, wore the red robe that we're all familiar with. But, um... I guess we'll never really know fully the whole story. You know, there's all these different versions of him, yeah. Anyway, in this version, yeah, we have like an origin story at the beginning when he's an ordinary man called Claus, because that's short for Nicholas, yeah. And um, yes, he's married to a woman called Anya, and it doesn't specify where they are. Um, do they live in Finland or Norway? Um, well, somewhere where it snows a lot every winter, yeah. Somewhere near the North Pole, yeah. And um, because he has no children of his own, that's why he makes these toys and gives them to kids everywhere in all the surrounding villages. And um, so, yes, it's psychological. It's to make up for not having a child of his own, yeah. And, um, yeah, and he loves... He's like a local celebrity, yes. He likes the joy and the adulation. He's basking in all the fame. Yeah, yeah, he's a local celeb, yeah. And then... Um, I suppose I should mention this was made by the Alexander and Ilya Sulkind film production. Now they just had mega hits of Superman and Superman 2. Yeah, so they were, well, that's why the flying sequences, are, the style of them are very like the Superman films. They made Superman 3. They wanted Dudley Moore in that. He was not interested. They asked, do you want to be in Supergirl? Not interested in that. Then finally, 1985, do you, and he, okay, yep, he agreed. He liked the script. He wanted to be in it. And Dudley Moore was the most famous person when the film was made. In fact, on this little DVD here, you can see that Dudley Moore has top billing at the top. He plays the elf called Patch. Now, yes, he is important to the story, but uh, he's not the lead character. The movie's called Santa Claus, yeah. But then the same thing happened with the Superman movie, yes. The, the actors that don't star in it, just feature in it, their names are top billing, yeah, because they're the ones to advertise it, yeah. But the strange thing is... Um, the movie Santa Claus a movie, it was a huge flop when it was brand new, but it has gained a big subcot following over the years. Apparently, the people of England like it a lot more than the people of America, yeah. And it's shown on TV every Christmas or every other Christmas, yeah. But um, there was one film critic that said, is this a good movie? Well, it appeals to small children, children under 10, you know. Yeah, yeah, children would like it a lot. So why is Dudley Moore in it? Little kids in the 80s are not going to know who Dudley Moore is. You know, he was in films that were aimed at adults in the late 70s, early 80s. They're not going to know who he is. And, um, but, uh, but then maybe that's kind of the point. To make as much money as possible, makers of the film wanted it to appeal to children, but also appeal to adults. So put Dudley Moore in it, put someone really famous, then kids will enjoy, kids and adults will enjoy it as well. Although sometimes that's debatable. Yes, I've had some grown-ups say to me, when they see a movie aimed at children, it doesn't become any better just because um, well-established famous stars are in it. So sometimes that formula works, sometimes it doesn't, yeah. 
But either way, it's a very enjoyable movie. And then, okay, nitpick time. <laughs> when Claus, he's called Claus at first, then later becomes called Santa Claus, he's in his sledge with Donna and Blitzen, so two of the reindeer, and they get lost in the snow. Um, they, they take the wrong path or something like that. And um, they're left for dead. Everyone thinks they've frozen to death. Then the vendor gum, or elves as they prefer to be called, uh, take them to this magic kingdom that's hidden right underneath the North Star on the North Pole. Yeah, right on top of the world. Because it's top secret, this place that makes toys. So they don't want anyone else to know about it. So it's in a place that's inhospitable to man. Or inhospitable to man in the Middle Ages. So humans can go there now because they have technology to keep them warm. But not at the time it was impossible for humans to go there because it's so cold. And um, when they are inside the Magic Kingdom and the, the elves open these massive doors and there's loads and loads of toys in there and Anya and Claus are amazed, you know, I mean, Claus is an expert toy maker but he's never seen anything like it. These are state-of-the-art toys, real craftsmanship. He goes, what are they to do with me? And one of the elves called Dooley says, oh, that you're going to give them to your children. But we don't have any children. You do now. You have all the children of the world. So you, you, and you're going to live forever. And you're going to, every Christmas Eve, you're going to deliver these to, to all the children of all the world everywhere. Um, what about our family and friends? Well, they think you're dead. You're left for dead. They think you're frozen to death. Well, couldn't we say goodbye to them or give some explanation? Anything? No. <laughs> but then Santa Claus thinks this job is a great opportunity to deliver toys to everyone in the world. So that he doesn't say goodbye to his family and friends. Oh, that's a bit off. That's not right. No, no, you should at least say goodbye to them or give them some explanation, you know. So, I mean, it made logical sense to me as a child. You know, this amazing job is more important than anything. But as an adult, I think, no, no, no. You should say goodbye to your dear ones if you're going to do this job forever, yeah. And uh, yes, we see the centuries pass from the Middle Ages into the 18th century and the 19th century. And yes, Santa Claus is a well-established celebrity everywhere. Oh yes, bit of film trivia if you like. The ancient elf, he's never given a name, he's just known as the oldest of all the elves. That's why his beard is so long, because he's centuries older than any of the other elves. And he's played by Burgess Meredith. Burgess Meredith played Mickey in three of the Rocky films. And Bill Conte wrote the music for Rocky, and he wrote the music for this, Santa Claus as well. So yeah, there's a movie connections there. And very solemnly, you know, um, the ancient elf says, from this day forward, you will be called Santa Claus. Yeah, you're a saint, yeah, or Saint Nicholas or Santa Claus. And then Santa Claus asks this question, how can I deliver so many presents in just one night? And the ancient elf says, time travels with you. You'll be given the gift of endless night until your mission is complete, yeah. And then um, in the 19th century, however, some people were questioning... How come everybody knows what Santa Claus looks like if no one's ever seen him? Well, the famous poem, It Was the Night Before Christmas, is all about a man that sighted him, caught glimpses of him. Yeah, and that, that was a very famous poem, and it remains popular today, yeah. Santa Claus didn't like the fact that everyone thought he was overweight. No, it's a bit sensitive about that issue, yeah. And then um, it's the 20th century, and Patch, yes, very clever for Dudley Moore here, Dudley Moore plays Patch, who invents this machine to mass-produce toys because the population of the Earth has gotten much, much bigger. So it's to mass-produce toys uh, to save time. Why do they need to save time? I thought time travels with them. Time is relative. They can have all the time they want. Why would they need a machine that saves time? Well, uh, that bit isn't clearly explained. Anyway, Patch makes all these toys, but because it's done by a machine... Some of the toys are faulty. Most of them work fine. That's the problem with mass production, yeah. Unless you do them all by hand, how do you know every single one is in perfect working order, yeah. And for the first time ever, they have returns. Yeah, their toys are not very good, yeah. And then the, the, the plot takes a very different turn. We see modern-day New York and BZ, you know. Um, why is it called BZ? What does that stand for? I don't know, because he very busy, like a busy, busy bee, buzz, 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 or doesn't clearly specify. Just that he called BZ, and he's the head of BZ Toys. Some of his toys are faulty. One of his dolls catches fire much too easily if it ever gets hot or near a cigarette, and that, that's dangerous, yeah. He has a cuddly toy. It's supposed to be full of fluff. Instead, they find one of them that is full of bits of glass and nails, yeah. 
Because again, the problem with mass production, you don't have the great attention to detail of every single individual toy. And he's in a lot of trouble with the law. He has to go to court. And the, the, the chairman says, you know, unless you withdraw every single BZ toy off the market, your license as a manufacturer will be revoked. So he's in a lot of trouble, but Patch wants to help him, help clean up his image. And he makes this lollipop that's made of the same magic dust that the reindeer eat that enables them to fly. If you eat this lollipop, you can walk a few feet above the air. Yeah, so that, that'll make a cool toy. And they're going to give them away free. <coughs> now, BZ, excuse me, goes berserk. The idea of giving anything away free is completely unheard of to him. But then he thinks, wait a minute, this could clean up my image. Yeah, that's forward thinking. I'll give a whole load of lollipops away free. And if they like it, the next one I give up, it'll cost them money. Yeah, so that's forward thinking, yeah. In other words, Patch, the elf, he's not stupid, but he's ignorant. You know, he doesn't know that Beezy is a bit of a corrupt, evil businessman because he just thinks the best of people. He hasn't had any contact with the outside world. He doesn't know any better, yeah. Anyway, the lollipop is delivered in the Patchmobile, so a flying car that runs on the flying the, the dust, the magic flying dust, instead of running on petrol or gasoline. Anyway, um, but when Santa Claus finds out about this, because there's an advert for it on TV, well, this has never happened before. A competitor for Santa Claus, someone else that's doing the same thing as him, delivering to everyone all over the world. Should Santa Claus be jealous, say, I can do a better job better than anyone else? Well, he thinks, OK, I'll just leave it for now. I'll do my job the way I've always done it. And uh, yes, the lollipop is a huge, big hit all over the world. It makes you walk a few feet above the air. And people are mesmerised by it, yeah, so it's a huge big hit. So naturally enough, BZ thinks we need to do a, a follow-up. But Patch wants to go back home. He says, um, now that Sam Claus has seen what a good assistant I can be, but BZ says, no, if you go back, then I can't make money with the next one. So, so instead they do candy canes instead of lollipops. But the problem is, if candy canes are ever near a radiator, they explode. They're not safe. Well, wait a minute. One slight problem with this plot twist. OK, it, has to, it mustn't get too hot because it comes from the North Pole. But why didn't the lollipops explode? Why is... Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it never clearly explains why in the film. But I guess from what I can make out, uh, maybe it's because the, the formula had been made stronger, so it makes you float much higher in the air. Because of that, they become volatile if they ever get too hot. And sadly, the Patchmobile explodes, yes, with, well, Patch is in it, yeah. But yeah, Santa Claus managed to save him at the last minute, yeah. So overall, it's an enjoyable film. It is cheesy and silly in some parts, but cheesy within reason. I don't know what it is about more recent Christmas films. They get much too cheesy, much too babyish. Well, this one doesn't. It doesn't get too babyish. It's cheesy, but within reason. And it gives you this great feel-good factor feel. Okay, one last bit of irrelevant stuff. The A-Team van makes an appear a cameo in the film. Has it got anything to do with the story? Is it about the A-Team does it best and in the same way Santa Claus does it best? I don't know. There's no B-A, but there is B-Z in the, in the film, yeah. Well, when B-Z finds out the candy canes are volatile, he decides to take the money and run. He doesn't care that, that this product is dangerous. So therefore, he's not the better man, no. Santa Claus is the better man because he would never sell a product that, 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 that's dangerous. Yeah, whereas B-Z doesn't care... If, if a product is dangerous, yes, he puts the money before making people happy. Whereas with Santa Claus, it's the other way around. Making people happy is more important than making money. So yeah, there's nothing wrong with making lots of money from selling toys, so long as the product is safe, yeah. Okay, that's enough from me, and uh, if you're in a sad mood, you're feeling depressed, this cheers you up. This can capture the Christmas spirit better than any other Christmas film. Okay, that's enough from me. Thank you for watching. I'm Anthony Hobbs and I'm never bored.